In this video, I will teach you how to make a kill counter in Fortnite UEFN and Verse. This counter also supports multiplayer, as you can see on the screen. Here is everything you'll need to build this counter. A player spawner. An item spawner. And a kill counter device, which is a custom device that we're gonna make ourselves. Start with creating a new Verse file. I'm calling it a kill underscore counter underscore device. Open your new device in Visual Studio Code. First add these imports at the top of the file. You can find them in the description. Make a player stats class. This is a class we're gonna assign to each player to track their data points, such as eliminations. Here we assign variables. Under the variables we create getters and setters. With these functions we can change the variables from elsewhere in the file. Create two functions to add counts to kills and deaths. Also create a function to get the current elimination count. You can add more variables and function in these player stats. However, we don't need more for this project. Now that we completed this player stats class, create a new tag called spawner. We are going to give this class to all our player spawners so we can track who joins and leaves the game. I will show you how to add this tag to a spawner after we completed this device verse file. Create a variable for the text which we're gonna use in the UI. I'm calling this variable kill in text UI. This variable takes a string parameter. This is gonna be the actual kills text. So a quick recap. We have a class to track player, a spawner tag for the player spawners, and a compatible text variable for the UI. Next, we're gonna make a player map. This is an array where we store our player stats linked to a player. The word player inside the brackets is the identifier to know which player we're referring to. This is what it would look like if you visualize it. Now we create the init spawners method. We will run this method at the start of the game. This method will look for every player spawner which contains the spawner tag we created earlier on line 27. After finding all spawner, loop over them. In this loop we subscribe all the spawner to a onplayer added method. We will create this method in a minute. In the onBegin method, call the method to initialize the spawners at the start of the game. We also subscribe to a method which is gonna remove player stats when they leave the game. Let's walk through the onPlayerAdded method. This function gets triggered whenever a new player joins the game. First, it checks if the new player's ID already exists in the player map. If it does, the method retrieves that player's stats from the map. However, if the player doesn't exist in the player map, it moves into the else block. Here, the method adds the player's stats to the map. Inside the else block, it checks if the agent stats object exists. If it does, we print the player's kills by calling the getElem count method on agent stats. Next, the method sets up an event listener for character elimination by subscribing to the eliminated event of the new player's character. Then it creates a UI button, which is defined as button underscore loud. This button is dynamically set up on the UI using a canvas system.
anchors, offsets, alignment, and other properties are defined to position the button on the screen correctly. If you want to know more about how the Canvas UI system works, I recommend watching my other video on UI elements. Finally, the button is added to the player's UI, ensuring that the player sees their elimination stats in real time on the screen. The button is linked to the player's stats, specifically the elimination count, and this is updated using the setText method. Next, we are going to make the onEliminated method, which handles eliminations to add the points to the right characters. First, the method retrieves the character who performed the elimination, referred to as the eliminator, and the character who got eliminated, called the eliminated. This information is obtained from the result object passed into the function. The code then checks if the eliminator character exists and attempts to get the agent associated with that character by calling getAgent. If successful, it records the elimination by calling the addElimination function with the agent as the argument. This method essentially tracks eliminations and deaths, updating the appropriate statistics for each character involved in the encounter. Now, let's break down the addElimination method. This method is triggered when an agent scores an elimination. The first thing it does is check if the agent belongs to a player by looking it up in the player map. If the player object exists, it continues by looking up that player's stats from the player map. Once it has the player's stats, the method initializes a new UI button called UI button using the button underscore loud class. If the player's UI, player UI is accessible via get player UI, the method proceeds to create a canvas to house the button. You can copy the canvas part from the on player added method. After this, the method updates the player's stats by incrementing their elimination count using agent stats, dlim1. Finally, the method updates the text of the UI button to reflect the player's total number of eliminations by calling setText on the button. Let's take a look at the addDeath method. This function handles what happens when a player's agent dies in the game. First, the method checks if the agent is associated with a player by looking it up in the player map. If the player objects is found, the method retrieves the player's stats from the player map. Once the player's stats are retrieved, the method increments the death count by calling agent stats at death1. This updates the player's statistics to reflect their latest death. This method is straightforward, simply tracking the death event and ensuring that the player's stats are updated accordingly. Finally, let's explore the onPlayerRemoved method. This function handles the event when a player leaves the game and ensures their data is properly removed from the player map. First, the method checks if the player who is leaving player leave exists in the player map. If the player is found, we proceed to create a temporary map called tempplayerMap, which will store the remaining players. Next, we iterate through all entries in the original player map. For each entry, it checks if the key, which represents the player, is not equal to player leave. If the key is different, the method adds that entry to the temp player map. Finally, after all players except the one leaving have been added to the temp player map, the original player map is replaced with this new temporary map. This effectively removes the leaving player's data from the map while preserving everyone else's stats. This method efficiently cleans up the player's data when they leave the game, ensuring the player map only contains active players. We completed the kill counter device. Let's go back to the editor. Back in the editor, place down your player spawners and your new counter device. After you place these down, make sure to push changes to the games, 
otherwise it is possible the editor won't see our spawner tag. Now let's add our tag. On the player spawner, go to details on the right and click add. Type verse tag markup and add this property to our spawner. Here we can give a tag to our spawner. In this dropdown we can see all available tags, and as you can see there is our spawner tag. Push changes again, and that's it. You created a kill counter device. Thank you for watching.